I figured um, being in SUNY as long as I have since about 1998 that everybody in SUNY loves a good acronym. So to talk about effective online course design, uh, I thought of some of the areas that are important to me when I work with faculty and what I'd like to see and encourage. So I came up with an acronym. And the acronym is C3PO, which, you know, Star Wars, you can't get the sci-fi geek out of me. And uh, so I wanted to talk about some of these with you today. So the first one is, is clarity. So when I'm working with faculty, I like to encourage being very clear because many of our online learners come from different walks of life. They may be in different countries. And the clearer that we can be in the way that we impart our content to them, the better they're going to be successful in that kind of environment. Um, also, we don't have the opportunity, as, as many know, in online course um, work to immediately answer questions of, of learners. So it's important that we're clear in everything that we instruct them to do um, to be effective and, again, to promote their success. Uh, I also, the second C, would be community. And community is important. When I was at Tompkins Cortland Community College, um, I did a research study looking at uh, retention and attrition in online courses. And one of the pieces of information that we discovered was that many of our online students felt alone. They felt like an island uh, in their courses. So any way that an instructor can build community among the learners, uh, or even I would say among learners in other online courses that may have compliments. I think the more those students aren't going to feel alone and then you can start building um, all kinds of other exercises or activities. Uh, I also like to encourage community building where you send your online learner out into their own geographical communities to bring what they're learning to those communities, in addition to bringing resources back into the courses as well. Uh, so a kind of reporting back. Uh, something I did uh, in helping Cornell develop one of their massive open online courses, which is a different kind of online course, uh, was an American capitalism course. And with the faculty, uh, we worked on developing kind of book clubs for the MOOCs so that we could connect learners who were taking that MOOC within their communities with one another to have discussions face-to-face -face outside. So community is so important because you don't want those online learners feeling completely alone and by themselves. Another C would be consistency. And consistency in the design of the course is going to be also extremely important because we want learners not to feel completely turned around with a new module uh, of content that may be designed in a completely different way. Um, the more the technology and the design of the course can be transparent to the learner, the more they can focus on the content and the assignments that they need to complete. Um, so again, consistency in everything that one does uh, in terms of module order of items, um, the way that you're introducing and designing a document uh, is all going to be extremely important. So those were the three C's. And then if we talk about the P, I like to talk about presence. And uh, I always think of Dr. Peter Shea when I think of presence because of his work on instructor presence in online courses. Um, it's important. It's part of that community building that we need to see uh, for the learners to be successful. And um, of course, we want our students to be present in online courses, but the instructor has to demonstrate that presence um, in many different ways. Um, I also think about presence in terms of campus presence. When we have open SUNY as we have right now, I think there's a, there can be a tendency for, for campuses to feel like their, their currency or their culture is being at risk in terms of being um, um, generalized in certain ways. So I like on my campus at Binghamton to encourage faculty to think about how are you going to build campus presence in your online course. 
It can be anything from a, a simple banner in the course that is customized to the campus or the department that maybe showcases a building or a portion of that, all the way to bringing in streamed events that may be going on on campus or different speakers that may uh, have some type of website that's developed for them. I think the more you can kind of build that campus presence, the more our courses are going to be unique within a larger open SUNY uh, type of environment. So I love presence. Um, the last one, which is the O of C3PO, would be outcomes-based. Um, with any online course and any learning management system, there are many, many, many tools that one can use. Uh, we have a very successful Tools of Engagement project that's going in uh, within SUNY as well. I think it's very important to, for faculty to understand you need to think about what your learning outcomes are before you actually choose the tools that you're going to be introducing to your students. So at Binghamton, we, we follow a, a fairly strict um, pedagogical process of backwards design uh, in terms of thinking about what do you want the students to learn and then how are you going to assess that learning and then lastly choose the activities and tools that you want those learners to use. Um, when you follow that process as well you can use those tools to report back to your learning outcomes as well. So should a department chair or a middle states accreditor ask you how many of your students are getting this particular learning objective in your course or maybe even on the departmental level? How are they meeting? If you're mapping those in, in easy ways, it's easier to track and analyze the data uh, of how you're being effective in those different areas and what your students are learning. Um, so the C3PO, as we come kind of square around, is, is the acronym I wanted to share as a way of introducing um, how we look at, and, and me in particular, online course design when I'm working with faculty.